Hello and welcome to Fluke Friday, Episode 2, where we're going to talk about all things Fluke, both products and how we use them, some applications. Um, moving forward, we're going to talk about various products from Fluke lineup. Um, but today, what I brought is I actually brought this box and I have a different tool than you might think on the inside. I actually have a red multimeter. Where does this red multimeter from? This red multimeter is actually an Amprobe multimeter. And Amprobe is owned by Fluke. Okay? And uh, a lot of people didn't realize that. A lot of people that I've talked to, customers, they don't realize that Amprobe is owned by Fluke, but it is. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about why is that significant? Why would it matter that Amprobe is owned by Fluke? And why would I look at the Amprobe line if I was considering other value products. So Fluke did buy Amprobe years ago. Um, I think it's, I don't know, it's been a long time, well over 15 years ago. And over the course of that time, Fluke's done a lot of revamping of the line and uh, making it safer. And safety is really, I think, the main reason why you should consider an Amprobe product versus the competitive products at the same price point. Now, Amprobe is, um, not not going to be a fluke multimeter. They're not they're not the same. So I'm not trying to claim that. But what I am trying to claim is that if you buy an Ampro product, you are getting a safer product than the competitors at a similar price point in the market. So and why would that be? Well, fluke takes safety very very seriously. Um, you know, fluke is one of the only manufacturers, if not the only manufacturer in the United States that has the equipment that they can actually shock a meter, overload it with electricity, and see how that meter fails. And make sure that it's meeting the safety standards that the meter was designed to. And tested to, hopefully. So if you go, um, if you look at any, any kind of company that's halfway reputable, if you look at the back of their meter, there should be a testing stamp on the back of it by a third-party testing agency like CSA or some other various UR, URL uh, or not URL, UL uh, um, and hopefully they'll have they'll be third-party tested not just hey we as a manufacturer did this but the problem becomes is once it gets tested by that third party you get that test of approval that stamp of approval I should say you never have to go back and get tested again. Something could change and things do change and no one would ever know. I always say Fluke and Amprobe, we're not like, we're just like every other company, we have recalls. The difference is we issue recalls when an engineer in a lab finds out something that's wrong and the other companies out there, a lot of times they issue recalls when there's been an incident and somebody got hurt or killed. And that is not where Fluke or Amprobe wanna ever be. So, a little bit about Amprobe and um, a, a story that I like to tell um, my customers about Amprobe is, you know, if you look at the AM500 series, the AM510, 520, 530, you'll notice it jumps straight to a 560 and a 570. Well, what happened to the 540 and the 550? What happened there was we passed third-party certification, we passed all our safety stuff, we started shipping products. Fluke continued to test the Ampro products that were coming in. And guess what? What happened was somebody in Asian Inc. had decided to change an internal component and there was a safety. It created a safety issue. Fluke was able to, Ampro was able to issue a recall. Basically, these meters got to distributors, but they never even got to end user hands. We were able to issue a recall, get all those back, and that's why. There's a gap in the in the naming structure of the 500 series. Had that been a competitor, those products would have been out in the market for years before somebody would have got hurt and somebody would have realized what happened. So that's really why I think if you're looking at a lower price point, you can't afford the Fluke, I get it. Consider the Ampro brand. It's got some really, really cool stuff. 
Now what I'm hoping to do is I'm going to go through these various Amprobe multimeter models and kind of tell you a little bit about them and their price point so that you guys can then make an informed decision on what's best for you. And if you're just starting out or you want a secondary meter other than your Fluke, this is a great choice. So if you start at the AM570, that's going to be at our high end price point. It's going to have a lot of horsepower. Um, you're going to spend a lot more money, but I wouldn't consider it a, a cheap meter. It's a 500, or not 500, it's $208 MSRP as of today. Now, obviously, prices change, but as of today, all these are MSRP, so that's our suggested list price, but that's just for today. So $208 today. The AM530, very popular for electricians, is $100, and it is True RMS. So everything above the AM530 is True RMS. As we get below the AM530, it's going to be average responding. Why is that important? I'm not going to go into great detail with that, but if you do have nonlinear loads like computers, LED lights, it can give inaccuracies when you are when you have a lot of nonlinear loads where a true RMS meter will give you accurate readings. Okay. The next would be an AM510. Um, this is a great for kind of the, the homeowner um, that wants a more professional meter but doesn't want to spend the money. Uh, the AM510 is a great option. This is going to be uh, about, this MSRP on this is $50. And then you take a step below that. You start to change the form factor. It looks different. It's a smaller unit. Um, and this one, but it still has removable test leads. It has the banana jack so you can use any test lead on the market so you can use any accessory on the market um, as long as it's a four millimeter banana jack which is the standard. And it's $42 MSRP and then you drop down to the lowest end one, the smallest one, and it's an AM420. And this is really for somebody that's doing low voltage stuff, maybe just working on a car. It's great for that. Um, the big disadvantage in my opinion is you don't have removable test leads. Um, so when these test leads wear out, you get a new meter. Now, what's the price point on something like that? That's going to be $24. So pretty good. If you are looking at that low-end meter, I would also consider looking at this kit. This kit is a great little deal. It's a PK110. It's $40 MSRP, and it comes with a volt pin, a socket tester, and a multimeter. And I think that that kind of sums up the Ampro lineup, and I hope that you kind of see that being owned by Fluke is a big advantage for a company like Ampro, and that there's, if somebody's new or they need a secondary meter, they want to spend a little less money, Ampro's a great, safe choice. The other thing is Ampro's got some unique tools that Fluke doesn't make. They've got wire tracers. Um, I hope to do a video on wire tracers at some point, breaker finders, underground cable locators, all sorts of tools that Fluke doesn't make that are unique niche tools that really help helps Fluke round out the portfolio. So this is the end of episode two. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, leave questions, comments below on any of the Amprobe uh, multimeter stay or any other Fluke or Amprobe um, tools you'd like to have videos on or you have questions about, and I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks and uh, have a great day. Take care.